be a good source of confidence. Also, if you if you do that, you open yourself a bit less to kind of constant second guessing. Or... That's down the Lord. We did talk about it. And it's something that Newbie have drafted a couple times. Yep. Um, they drafted both against the gyrocopter, feeling like the sustain um, is a good way to be able to prevent the gyrocopter from going out of control. And then also they picked it with it in a different time. It, this is looking like a, like a, a lineup that's just going to be super tanky, that's going to be hard for um, Team Secret to be able to um, have a whole lot of effectiveness with this gyrocopter. But Team Secret are in a better position, I think, than uh, maybe TNC was, because they've at least seen how that happened in the last series, and they have their last pick um, for their mid still to go. I, I'm kind of thinking this is going to be a, a, a Fada Tiny, but they could still do certain things. Like maybe a safe lane tiny and mid gyrocopter or something like that. Yeah, they're not a they're not a tiny playing team. No, they're not. Um, run a huge amount. Yeah, they have to again. Like they have to. Their last two core picks probably need to have pretty high kill potential. Certainly, once he has levels, uh, the tiny definitely does. It makes uh, the roaming very profitable. I think the tankiness takes away maybe the Storm Spirit. We've seen issues with Storm Spirits, uh, say, at Ginting, uh, had a problem with these tankier lineups. Uh, maybe the Invoker uh, would be a bit more suitable for Team Secret. It's one of those carries. Phantom Lancer, maybe. Phantom Lancer is actually pretty good here. Seconds remaining. It's been more than three months since they last played Tiny on a lot. Seconds, Pro game. Then again, we saw that I think there was a game where PL had to go up against an Underlord and he had a really tough time because so much of his damage was taken away. He, he just like would fight for so long and he just <laughs> couldn't bring anybody down. There was things like Shiva's, they had Crimson Guard maybe. Maybe a little bit worried about the, uh, <laughs> the cheese in game one. Always good to have a player like Ace on your team when he can play so many of those... Uh, Slightly obnoxious heroes like Brood. Yeah, and or Meepo stuff like for that Meepo matter. Yeah. 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 Scar as well, you can play. And really weird ones like Wraith King. <laughs> like, who's playing Six. Wraith King? Nobody else. That's for sure. Yeah. Definitely happy playing some of the uh, some of the out there stuff. He's played a lot of Slark recently as well. I feel Interesting. This might, be, this might be a morph game. Uh, so maybe it's like a little bit slower, but some synergy there and. Uh, there's not that much reach or catch for it. Pretty difficult to deal with that hero. I think if the game goes long, it'd be very hard to win against that. Jack, what do you think about OD here, despite what we saw in that last series? You could do an OD safe lane against the Underlord. Give yourself a different setup. Ooh. Or you could do a Phoenix. That's a Fada Phoenix. It is a Fada Phoenix. They did this at what? Genting, I think? I don't like him right. Yeah, they did it against Virtus Pro. Yeah. I remember because Fada, I was very interested in the offlane Phoenix. It's a hero that I used to really like to run. I watched it closely, and Fada had a really rough game. But they still managed to overcome, in part because they had the Ace Lone Druid, and they had the mid one Invoker, so they were yeah. able to play that late game. Yeah. yeah, it was a very late game, 56-minute game. Uh, let's get some predictions. Jack, we'll start with you this time around. Uh, I'm going to say I, I like Secrets Draft. Um, I... I don't think that Newbie has the best answers. I think Secret can play very aggressive across other lanes. I think Phoenix is an underrated hero in that respect, and uh, I like Secret. Okay, Cap. Uh, I'm actually going to go Newbie here. I think the, the Secret have been trying to play a little bit more aggressive. I'm just not sure if they're 100% in their wheelhouse, um, and this is an aggressive lineup for sure. So. Okay. Newbie. Newbie. Sorry. Okay. Newbie. Newbie. All right. <laughs> I even full production. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> He's trolling production now as well. Uh, well done, Cap. Uh, they've gone for one for Newbie and one on the other side for Secret. As we head into game one, it's time to hand you over to our commentary team. Zayori, it's all yours, man. Thank you very much, Paul. It is a pleasure to be here in game one of Secret Newbie starts now. Trent, we've got some interesting picks. How are you feeling coming into game one? Uh, I mean, this is, this is what you want, right? 
secret newbie. Titans right at the top of the DPC. Team still looking to prove themselves though. One trying to get right to TI and the other just trying to keep themselves in that big conversation of the very top teams. So let's get right into it. Absolutely. So Phoenix, uh, one of the more surprising picks as well as Luna. I believe this is the second Luna pick of the tournament. So things are changing now that we're in the playoffs. Jim. Yeah, very quickly, of course, but a uh, little bit of speed. You know, these are definitely two of the slower teams like to play a more... Uh, Team fight oriented game, heading to those later game objectives. Lots of Roche, lots of refresher shards popping around in every single one of their games. Absolutely, my friend. Some initial wards coming down. Dyer are going to get a little bit of vision in the mid lane. And so far, Radiant just have one ward down in their jungle as we move into a quick pause. Trying to find a couple of those wards, but not yeah. quite right. But what do we got this time? So, in terms of uh, the drafts overall, uh, we're dealing with that much faster pace than the typical newbie Dota, looking much more like, of course, of our, the game we just had up on stage from VGJ mm -hmm. Thunder as uh, the Luna Viper. Do uh, early game focused cores, maybe try and get yourself a little bit of lead in the laning phase, run that down. Uh, the, uh, the Phoenix, though, as you were mentioning, definitely not a hero we see all too yeah. often. Uh, when, we, when it used to be popular, it was set up a lot by something like Tidehunter or Faceless Void because you have this like kind of almost like guaranteed sort of a stun idea, right? Something that's like big control, couple heroes, and then you want the follow-up uh, with the egg. But someone else who likes to do the exact same thing is Disruptor. Uh, you want to obviously get Static Storm on top of something like a Ravage or a, a Tree and Overgrowth or something like that. Uh, but they have to kind of work in tandem, I, I guess, off of like Fishers maybe might be your big goal here. So certainly a lot of burden, I would say, on Yapsor in this one to make sure that he's the one setting up for those big follow-up spells from uh, Puppy and Fada. And I mean, that even extends over to the other cores too. We're talking about Ace with the call-downs and then just that general initial burst damage during a team fight from mid one. Absolutely. When I think of Phoenix, I think about versatility, right? You've got huge team fight with that ultimate, but Sunray, one of the pretty good support spells. We've seen yep. that keep people alive in team fights, turn those little tiny edges when your cores are relatively low on HP. So um, thoughts about hurt, uh... Phoenix in the position three. I think of him more as a support these days rather than uh, a true off lane. Uh, he's just a hero that's always struggled with the levels, though. So getting into the core role, it's always going to feel a lot nicer uh, with the hero. And uh, percent base damage, of course, a rare thing. Underlord, he has it, but it tends to be pretty handy up against him as well. So be a little bit of a battle there between those two heroes. Looks like a 2-1-2 two -two going to be coming out of Newbie. Underlord starting in the off lane, and for now, Kaka going to be down there alongside. So looking to put some pressure on this gyrocopter nice and early. Secret, they could be gearing up for an aggro tri lane. Looks like Earthshaker's back at the base looking to block things off so they can get that lane control nice and early on. Yeah, Shaker, Disruptor, you're going to punish this. Yeah. I mean, one's the Walking Fisher and one is a hero that basically just spams Thunderstrike for the first couple minutes of the game. So uh, Luna already good against that. Witch Doctor, nice as well. Very aggressive two heroes. They can handle, honestly, they could probably handle all three if they want to hang out up here. Uh, yeah, that's definitely true. And, you know, Luna's not a hero we've seen too much in this event, as we were mentioning. And she's one that you almost have to pressure. If she gets that early momentum, if she gets out of control, feels very hard to deal with. Of course, that aura synergized nicely with five man, kind of the same sort of stuff you want to do with a Naga Siren as well as an Underlord. So the pick definitely makes sense here. I guess the question is, will Secret be able to pressure this Luna enough that she doesn't get out of control? Yep. I also want to mention this mid, uh, mid lane here, Viper versus Tiny. Thoughts about that? I imagine that should be pretty Viper favorite. Yeah, not a lot of fun, of course, but uh, Tiny, he's got the damage, so mid one, you can do all kinds of shenanigans now with trees. Yeah, the hero's been nerfed a little bit, but uh, it's Tiny. He can basically lane anywhere. You know, that's, that's why the hero's still so strong right now. But so, uh, you saw the Fisher blocks as well up top from Yapsor. One mm -hmm. of the benefits, like Clockwork has fallen out of favor, but uh, that was one of the best parts about picking up the heroes to enable poor off laners, and Phoenix definitely fits the bill there. Sure, survivable hero, but not necessarily the best at uh, keeping that wave in a nice spot. Yeah, it's turned into a 2 on 2 now. Puppy on the Disruptor is rotated to the bottom lane to support Ace, kind of reading the lanes from Newbie. Yeah, Jairus looks currently good. sitting at 0 CS. Right, there we go. Snags one up there, but... Uh, this is uh, why newbie, it's not just about the Naga Disruptor, you know? The, uh, the dual lane pressures they apply with the hero has always been a real staple of why it's become so popular for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Naga and Underlord both very beefy in those early levels. We see Yapsor up to some, some shenanigans in the top lane trying to mitigate this pull from Faith or at the very least absorb some experience. Pump faking for the last hits. But nothing too out of the ordinary out of this laning phase here, Trent. Yeah, Faith, though. I mean, that long initiation range from Fada could be our easy way to set one up yeah, here. The Coconut bounces back and forth. He does hit Maldick oh, on two, but it's a nice block for the Fissure. Of course, the first blood comes out elsewhere as we see this, but they will secure the kill onto Faith. 
The first blood, however, was drawn by the Naga Siren in the bottom lane on the Gyrocopter, so Nubi find the better of that global exchange. Yeah, certainly uh, almost inevitable, honestly, with just the Disruptor helping you out, Gyro having to play so aggressive, just get a couple last hits here. Still at 2-1 and one versus the 10-5 and five of the Underlord as the wave comes under his tower, and he can try and catch up a bit here. Underlord Naga is a pretty nasty duo, just the basic synergy of the Ensnare on top of the Firestorm. You get a lot more guaranteed damage on that. Uh, Underlord than you might normally expect in those early levels, and you can see it in the CS chart. Underlord right up there alongside the Luna. Yeah, and they're just like playing in the wave. You know, they can just push it in with the Underlord, and then, uh, then you know, four armor on Underlord, uh, ten armor currently on Naga. She passed the yeah. tower, but of course she's just at seven. But, uh... She's beefy. Double damage on Puppy might give Ace a little bit of breathing room in the lane here as KP doesn't really want to go blow for blow with that. And uh, looking at the mid lane, seems to be a pretty even spread. In fact, it's mid one with the advantage on the Tiny. What a hero. What a hero indeed. Nerfed a little bit in that last patch, but doesn't really seem to be slowing down mid one all too much. Up top, a little more of an exchange. It is going to be a safe lane try from Newbie now as they rotate in. Fada could be the first to fall as he's forced to Icarus dive away. Yapsor trying to finish off Faith as he moves through the trees, but this Earthshaker now going to be the one in trouble. Lucent Beam bringing him low, looking for an escape path oh. perhaps. He does have the TP, but he's going to get scouted out and Snare will interrupt it. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, the Underlord also going to go down. It's Ace that gets credit for that with the level 2 Rocket Barrage. Nice play there, just getting a little bit more aggressive with uh, the Naga up top, trying to pressure that dual lane instead. So, 2-2, two, two, pretty well even across the board on net worth as well. Yep, we're seeing that more commonly now. As soon as those supports show in another lane, it's likely the opposition will try to put that pressure on as soon as they know the Underlord is solo. So, very good for Secret, and of course, much needed recovery for Ace. Not only getting the kill, but now having a little more space to farm the lane. We'll have to see how this game uh, starts translating as well. Underlord, a hero that's uh, certainly not known for moving around a whole lot. So Fada might be able to give that edge over to Secret. Yeah, a lot of action in the top lane. Kaka getting low, but they want to commit for this kill on Fada. The Maledict is on, and he will fall, but likely to be a one-for-one. One. Yapsor gets the return kill. Three to three. Still a very even laning stage. No one can seem to get an edge here. Trading back and forth over and over. I guess you could say at least, uh, you know, Moogie's just last hitting, but uh, at the same time, mid one not only getting the advantage in the mid, but moving in some of those jungle camps as well. Yeah, maybe not too surprising though, Trent. You, when you talk about coming to a matchup of Secret versus Newbie, it's, it's one of these regional matchups that you don't really get to see except for on land, but this one, I feel like both these teams are very evenly matched from a basic skill uh, perspective. Yeah, they played the game pretty similar. I think uh, at the set of the tournament, you'd have to favor Secret, but uh, well, Fada, uh -oh. he's yeah. not favored uh, in that well, not a Siren, uh, pretty good against the Phoenix in that scenario. Icarus Dive, not going to be able to save you, and uh, Phoenix, very low armor. When you're stuck in place like that, you definitely go down quick. Good little bit of punishment there. But it kind of, as you mentioned, I guess Fada not overly concerned about farm. Really, it's the experience that the Phoenix is after in these early... Yeah, just him and Yapsor. You know, you need some way to try and enable Yapsor, and in this case, it's basically sandbagging uh, in some ways, but... Down bottom, Glimpse onto KP. The dubious duo of Ace and Puppy have a lot of damage, a nice block from Yapsor, and it'll be a 3v1 in the bottom lane to find another kill for Team Secret. Now squared up again for a piece. Yeah, it was close. I was getting worried with one team having an edge. <laughs> Yeah, this mid lane's still going well for the Tiny. He's kind of transitioned into a little bit of a jungler now, but in terms of uh, overall CS and just looking at the farm, actually Viper has a, a small net worth edge, but still great stuff for the Tiny as Fada once again initiated on. He'll have the Shrine. That's going to counter most of the effects of the Maldict, and I think he'll be able to survive through this without too much trouble, but the pressure is real for this offlane Phoenix. Yeah, just struggling to get to level 6, but uh, once he does have it, uh, there's a decent setup just from Yapsor. You know, he might be able to fish her and then dive in and set up an egg that's difficult for them to grab. If mid one's nearby, I can just throw on an avalanche. So they definitely have a lot of that protective AoE that you look for when you have the Phoenix Egg. Mm -hmm. So although it's not going to be that big, like, wombo combo stuff you look for, it's going to be much more, like, kind of scrappy Phoenix Egg fights. Yeah. be interesting to see if they can manage to get any damage on top of it. You are working with... Uh, Two very close heroes in terms of like the Naga and the Underlord might struggle to get some damage on there, but uh, Viper and uh, the Witch Doctor tagging away with Luna somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how this laning phase has ended up for Secret. The Tiny's rotated into the jungle, stacking and farming pretty well, sharing that experience with Disruptor, and now Fada's taken over the mid lane. Absolutely fantastic for Newbie as Luna is now in free farm heaven up top and number one on net worth by a nice little bump. And I think for Moogie, this is what he wants out of the laning phase, just working on those early items. And they're even going to bring a few heroes up top here, just to, you know, someone's probably going to show and defend this tower, so S-Triple-C wouldn't mind grabbing himself a free kill. 
Yapsor sees that too, though. He is wandering the long way around, does not want to take any risks here. Uh-oh, that's a level 6 Viper. Puppy could find himself in a sticky situation, just staying out of vision. Very close call, but he will make it into the tree line, and Newbie don't have eyes. Secret posturing like they want to mount a defense here. Yapsor is already here and the this tiny is now rotated. Puppy's going to show and he's going to get caught by the Eclipse. Moogie finds a freebie up top. Secret will now show to try to repel, but they do lose one already. They can hold though. Bada is getting some levels mid. Ace is ready to rotate. He has that call down. So they can't be too over aggressive here from Newbie. And this isn't exactly their strong suit. Not something that here, like uh, the players of Newbie are really used to doing uh, and performing. So. Have to see if they make any mistakes. Early rotation from the Viper, and it looks like they'll take heed to your advice here, Mr. Trent Pax, and they will back up uh, without taking undue risk. Still a lot of pressure on the tower. Down bottom, KP up to a pull to try to get a little bit of lane control back, though Ace, he sees it. He might try to contest the call down, will connect, and now the follow up. Huge damage from the Rocket Barrage, and even though the Firestorm is ticking him down, KP running low on options. Kaka on the way in, Bounty Rune picked up, but it will be the end of him. Kaka looking for a counter kill, and Snare will connect. Faith now rotating in, has a Maledict, a cast, but Kaka needs to be careful. Rocket Barrage doing so much damage here. Ace picks up the Bounty Rune himself and might be able to find it. No, it's so close, but 20 oh. HP, the Naga survives. See, when you play Naga every game, you, you perfectly get the limits of the hero, and Kaka's in there. No concern. Yeah, I mean, in those early levels, you think of Naga as a really tanky hero because she has a decent amount of HP and so much armor, but of course the magic damage from the Rocket Barrage just cuts right through it. Easy raindrop. Mm -hmm. No worries. Okay, so five to six. It looks like Newbie are the ones taking the advantage out of this laning phase, especially with that gyro copter, copter taking a tumble. Luna feeling pretty comfortable in her current position. This is sort of reminiscent of the last Luna game we saw just, uh, just moments ago, Trent. Yeah, we got auras on auras being thought about here. Moogie considering the helm. And oh. uh, as Triple C, I mean, he's already got the headdress, so I don't know if he wants to go for the hood and do a pipe or something like that, but uh, Numi have a game plan. You know, they came in just... And when you look at these two teams on paper, they're late game. You know, that's their thing. So maybe Newbie were like, yeah. okay, maybe we don't have to go full early aggression, like insane, but if we can get that edge, we know they're a little bit slower. Yeah, Helm of the Dominator seems like a, a very well-suited item for Luna in the current meta, right? Get her some extra survivability. There are a lot of things you can do with that creep. Stacking yep. in the jungle and also just the diversity of having stuns and slows and purges and whatever else you can grab from your current creep at hand. Down bottom, Newbie looking for some aggressive action, but not going to find it as Yapsor TPs out just in the nick of time. Yep, counter push up top, though. They force Mugi just into the jungle, so pretty typical these games. I see that, and Ace has already used the call down as well, so that's going to make it much more difficult than to actually defend bot, and uh, well, KP gets glimpsed right back down, so Mugi is rotating over with the help of Faith. Again, without that call down, it might be enough for them to feel uh, safe in this position. Bata has the 6 though, but he's being seen rotated top by wards. And not necessarily the easiest tower for Secret to push. Still only two members of Nubia up here, but they could make a full rotation. Mugi does have the ultimate back available. That first point in the Bouncing Glaives. Secret are securing this for sure, though. Everyone's up here. Fada's nearby. Virtually impossible that Mugi saves this. This is starting to get into like the uh, the death trap territory. And yeah, so so far, there it is. It's going to be an easy initiation with the call down, the follow up damage. More than enough as mid one finds the kill on Mugi. Yeah, I think just like Fada showing mid was enough for them to say, okay, I think they backed off. Yeah. But then the other four heroes, well, they're chilling up top. So uh, they will trade bottom though, and uh, yeah, the death of Mugi, I guess. Uh, obviously still worth it for Secret, but it's not a total disaster for Newbie. Yeah, we're seeing this more and more commonly now. Rather than teams trying to defend those towers that are in a little bit of an awkward spot, especially those Tier 1s, more often they're happy just to trade and go Tier 1 for Tier 1, and both sides find some benefit. Looks like uh, Moogie's settling on the Mask of Madness. So heavy aggression, and then that freeze as Triple C up for that Mid lane, help. glimpse onto Kaka, but Still an follow egg up here. won't be there. Now tri S Triple C comes in, Puppy will TP home. Secret are forced to disengage, but no death on either side. Yapsor yeah, just uh, slowly getting his net worth up there. Already 1,100 gold, has some arcane boots. Yeah. This guy's terrifying, you know? I, I really thought they were going to ban the Shaker in the first phase. Uh, just a solution a lot of teams have gone for, because somehow he just does this, you know? Every game. No one else is really picking the hero, but Yapsor yeah, is extremely good at getting that early game farm, and then this... Support, you know, the core shaker is that guy you think of as like really changing the game with like an early blink dagger or something, but he manages to do it just out of the four. Yeah, it's very true. 2-1-2 two, two right now is his KDA. 
As we just observed, uh, very low on the CS chart, but that's sort of what makes Yapsor so good at this role. He's not taking farm, he just always seems to be in the right place at the right time to try and set up those plays. Uh, Helm of the Dominator now completed on Viper. So, uh, curious if Nubi are actually going to go double HOD. Nah, he's masking. He's good. Oh, okay. the Luna's. Luna's gone mask, so they've yeah. switched it up. Now Song of the Siren comes out mid as they disengage. Now, can they counter with the egg is the question, you know? Is it, is it worth it? Uh, it's gonna now be that Song's tough. down, we can Ace just kind of aim into this. on the way in the back, but there's the glimpse. They really want this Viper, and with the Gyrocopter here, they might just have enough damage. Toss from the Tiny helps secure the kill, and Secret will back up with one more kill under their belt. And almost more importantly, just the cooldown of Song. Feels so much stronger pushing in that mid tower now if they want to make a commitment there. And without that early aggression or an early lead from Newbie, you start to kind of feel this underlord. It's like, oh, what am I doing? Like, KB hasn't got to play with his team all that much. He's just kind of pushing out waves on the side, trying to keep them in uh, some sort of an even game. But uh, yeah. even just the Phoenix being in all these fights has felt uh, a little more effective. Absolutely. It looks like the Underlord gearing up towards a pipe. Definitely a great game for it. Huge magic damage on Secret, so no complaints about that item build there. And on the side of Secret, mid one seems to be going straight for the Shadow Blade, and he's actually just got it picked up. Just needs a turn with the Courier, or heading back to the base. But uh, really good timing on this Shadow Blade here. Yeah, he can start roaming around looking for kills. Yapsor can show up uh, maybe to finish them off, or he can just camp the wave now because there's going to be this threat of the Tiny across the map, so you don't necessarily need like a roaming partner for the Tiny because the burst is so brutal. Mm -hmm. And KP's galloping his way to the side shop, though. Dire Ancients, big stack for the Loon. I think at least a triple stack here, so Mugi's farm continuing to accelerate and maintaining that edge for Newbie. Looks like they've got another big stack on the other side uh, in the Dire Jungle. Slowly just waiting down here. Not gonna find anything though. Oh, that ward from Newbie though. Spying the rotation of Puppy. So they understand that Secret wants to make some sort of a play down bottom. They're gonna try and counter with Kaka, but again, he has no song right now. Just to be a little careful. Puppy will get eyes now, and Snare comes out first, and the follow up from Newbie, but Static Storm Kinetic Field is already gone. Puppy could be the first casualty, but no, it's the other way. It's actually KP, then Mugi. Mid one and Fada finding both those kills. Kaka now in deep. Ace will come in with a rocket barrage, and it's a three for nil. Secret pull into the lead. Yeah, Boogie silenced up at a very inopportune moment. You know, maybe there's a chance for an ulti, might make some kind of a play, yep. but had to go for that raw physical damage, and they will end up getting a tier one mid out of it. Yeah, small edge for Newbie, but now S Triple C glimpsed back the Echo Slam, and they will find two in the mid. It's a full five man wipe. I think we can call that worth it. See ya. All right, well, a tower down, but also a team fight won. And now that gyrocopter vying for the first place uh, in terms of net worth. Also grabbing that siege creep there. Helm of the Dominator, thank you. Well, it's the app source time. He's about to have that blink dagger. And when they're just already starting to get this control of the game, he's going to be able to set up a nice little play for Fata here, who has the Midas and is doing the old school build of just going Midas straight to Shiva's. Down bottom, mid one initiates onto the Underlord. That's the Shadow Blade. And now the Sunray from Fata just ticks him down. It's another pickup for Secret. Mid one now securing an unstoppable streak. Yeah, and that's only uh, level two as well, right? It's the percent base, though. So good against Underlord. Especially good for just. Trying to finish people off as they run away. A lot of range on that Sunray. Hard to get away from. 1,400 damage from the Tiny in that. Just wow. Already instantaneous a, burst. A Midas as well uh, on the Phoenix. Of course, a, a very core item on this hero. So much about experience. You want to get to that level 3 egg pretty much as quickly as you can. Makes all the difference in those team fights. You're actually even close to the level 2 egg. But uh, you look at all these fights and how things have been going, and you're like, but how, how are they only up 1k? What's happening? Well, Moogie's farm. You know, he's hitting these Ancients. He is staying up there at the current moment. He's going to have another big stack here with a couple Prowlers and Dragons. This is the money stack. Absolutely. And Faith wants in on some of this. Newbie are doing a really good job managing their economy this game and setting up Moogie for success. Now Luna moving into as a Dragon Lance up next. And, of course, a BKB will need to come out probably earlier rather than later this game. Bit of a tough one, but... Uh... KP has the hood, so maybe feeling like uh, he might be able to offer something in an engagement if it bursts out there, if he can manage to get himself to the pipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also those dire supports farming pretty well. We've been praising Yapsor for his farm, but Naga Siren not that far behind him. Was wondering if maybe she'd be pulling up that gold for Radiance, but looks like Glimmer Cape uh, is the item choice up next. Glimmer on her, and then Glimmer on Faith as well, with the Witch Doctor, of course, very common item on him, but 
Uh, it won't help them do Roche at all. Unless, maybe they don't need the Medallion, though. Uh, just because they have the Underlord percent base damage. They have the uh, Luna, the Viper. So no one really needs to go for that. They're just going to go with that uh, double defensive up against that heavy magic damage. No question. I mean, we've got all five heroes on Secret are pumping out uh, plenty of magic damage. So Yeah, you can't underestimate the power of Firestorm against Roche. Definitely one of the most effective spells in the game at taking out the big guy nice and quick. Um, and, you know, similarly to Newbie, Secret are doing a great job stacking themselves. Gyrocopter and Luna, two of the, the better cores for uh, taking out those big stacks. And well, I guess mid one not going to be any slouch in that regard either. I like to see him uh, get another kill, though. Let's rock and roll here. He's looking up towards that Silver Edge current moment, though, of course. Uh, you know what's helpful up against Magic Heroes would be Corrosive Skin and uh, mm -hmm. that Magic Resistance. Why don't we just get rid of that? That's very true. Pop him instantaneously. I guess not that often you see Tinies go right for that Silver Edge without any other kind of core item. It becomes a natural upgrade at some point, but uh, Viper, this is the stage of the game where he's very beefy, especially against the sort of lineup they have that's so Magic Damage based at this stage. Right. It's a really smart this choice. This is his time. This is when Viper wants to be king of the jungle. And if you can you shut know, him down now, yeah, you don't have to worry about the light It's game. Viper. You know, win lane, lose game. That kind of a hero. Now, of course, much different hero these days. Has some better options. But uh, still, that premise definitely uh, a little bit intact. So there it is. Ready to go. Yeah, this, this mid game is really quite a downtrend. But as you look at that uh, gold graph, it is all secret all day. Of course, they did pick up that team fight, but the last few minutes haven't really had that many kills, and they are just finding a lot more efficiency around the map. Yeah, when you get a Midas Phoenix, you have a uh, very greedy four, I would say, in the Shaker, too. Like, you're fine. You can chill out, and you can see Yapsor as well going for that Aether Lens. We've seen this uh, plenty of times up against Naga Siren, just increasing the range of your Fisher mm -hmm. to ensure that you're going to be effective during the song, canceling out TPs if it's defensive or canceling canceling out combinations uh, if it's an offensive attempt onto your own teammates. Here we go, smoke rotation now from Secret, not scouted out by Newbie. They may get caught unaware. Mid one with oh, the Shadow Blade edge. will lead the charge, and it's now a Silver Edge. Secret. They're gonna go right for the Viper. The follow-up is there, but the Naga Siren does break things up. She's got the Song of the Siren. Can they set this up? KP with the Pit of Malice, but a huge dunk from Yabzor connects on three. The Eclipse turns, and it's actually mid one, then falls second, and then ace third. It's a one for three, make it four as Newbie clean up secret. Well, they got the Viper. Uh, that's your. I thought Yapsor had to cancel the song. He was so close. But yep. somehow, just in time, they pull it off, and that's Newbie in a nutshell. You saw it with the complexity. It's like the whole game, you're like, oh, they're losing. Oh, this doesn't look good. And then you wait for KP to come along with that Tidehunter. Now it's Kaka in this game with the Song of the Siren. Just almost into level 12 as well, so we're going to lose another 40 seconds off that cooldown. And that's where every fight, you're just so worried about that happening to you. Straight into the Roche pit at 20 minutes. He will fall. Ages of the Immortal ends up in the hands of Moogie's Luna. No surprise there with a BKB queued up next. We've got a replay to take a look at. Mid one looked like a great initiation from Secret, but look at the positioning of the Naga just on the other side of the tree line. Very oh, hard to Fisher find. Gets too. Yapsor had the right idea, but just yeah. half a second too late. The Underlord with a beautiful pit of malice. It looked like a great dunk from Yapsor to break up the fight, but since Moogie already had the Eclipse ready, it just destroyed the Earth Shaker the other way. Yep. Not caught out with the silence this time. <laughs> yeah, there's Spotted Face like, mm, I just want to play some Phoenix Dota here, but they will get a return kill. Faith does go down here. It helps. Uh, it's a little pick-me-up for mid one, but still newbie maintaining this lead. Also pipe now out on the Underlord, so everyone on newbie is going to be just a little more uh, survivable against this magical burst in yeah. the following team fights. Yule Scepter up next for the uh, KP Underlord. Trying to cancel out any plays from Fada. See him diving in. Can also uh, like precast it on the Shaker as well. A couple different nice options for it. Save yourself inside the Static Storm. Very nice choice. As well as movement speed's always okay, but Kaka does have that Glimmer Cape roaming on oh, in here. They do dust mid one. The smoke gets broken, thinking maybe the Shadow Blade is closer. Now the turn the other way. Puppy with a Static Storm Kinetic Field. They want Kaka, but the Phoenix caught from the Icarus Dive, interrupted by the Luna. He gets off the they have egg, to defend it. and now they are going to do that indeed. The combo will finish off the Aegis. Viper gets glimpsed back into the fight, and it looks like Secret might be able to take this. The taxi service gets queued up. KP trying to make the retreat, but he'll cancel it. Newbie think they can take this. Mid one's going to be the next to fall as Faith channels a He's huge backboard on the back line. Bada will survive as a nice fissure from Yapsor comes out. One for one, it's a relatively even exchange as both sides only lose their mid, but a lot of cooldowns used. Man, that, I thought that was going to go way worse for a newbie. That looked perfect. They defended the egg, it went off, everyone was stunned. They started looking like they were going to bail out, but uh, they of course did get the Aegis, so 
Uh, that does make it more difficult for Newbie to press any sort of an advantage at the current moment. And we still have the Echo Slam too, as you can see Yaps are posturing here as his teammates return for the defense. Scouted out by Cock on the back though with that illusion. And nope. that's going to give the vision for Puppy. Which no means tiny. it might not be a glimpse chase. Will Secret pursue Sunray as well as the homing missile chasing out, but it seems Newbie are not going to press their luck. They will just make the retreat and head back to friendly territory. That's such a great play by Kaka, though. Wrapping with the illusion, making sure Puppy mm -hmm. can't pull one back, can't force you to engage, because right now they do not want to fight necessarily oh. in that moment. But Are they actually going to back okay, up? I it could be do. a fake back from Newbie. They go back in onto Ace. The gyrocopter completely isolated. Eclipse flying through. Maledict will probably find this kill, and the Underlord ensures it with the Pit of Malice. Nicely just, done. Just as they pull back, the song comes back up and they say, hey, we can try something. If it doesn't go well, we'll sing. We'll get out of here, but we might get ourselves a free pick and back towards the tower we go. But once more, we, we still have mid one. There's sneaky initiations as well as the Echo Slam from Yapsor. Definitely still options for Secret. Also, that Static Storm ready to rock. Sentry Ward comes down for newbies, so they can't get wrapped on by mid one. He'll have to be very careful here. If the Tiny gets caught, this could be disastrous. KP in the front lines on that tanky Underlord, but is he tanky enough? He gets broken. Big damage comes his way, and it's mid one that finds the kill. Static Storm deployed, but well worth it as they do defend this tower. I'd say they'll be able to sneak themselves away, though. Even with a couple wards down here, they didn't have a glimpse ready in time. Now 23 minutes in trend, a pretty even game, the gold lead, less than a thousand for now in Newbie's favor. That'll be a gem picked up by the Witch Doctor, so it seems they do want to maintain map control and try to limit some of Secret's vision now. Definitely feels like it's going to be the BKBs that are uh, yeah. the next thing to come out in this game and kind of change the pace. We have the 10 second left on Mookie. We have one being constructed on Ace currently, and uh, he's almost there as well. So maybe both teams want to relax a little bit before that's up. Bata with the Shiva's guard would be okay with pressing a little bit forward though. Wow, full Shiva's completed on Fada. Pretty impressive farm for this Man. Phoenix. I guess 90 up, GPM Midas. It's true, it adds up. I mean, you think of Underlord as a pretty good farmer in terms of off lanes because of the, the nature of Firestorm, how easily you can push waves, clear stacks, all that kind of stuff. But Phoenix actually ahead of him right now, despite uh, the team not really being far ahead. It looks like Secret have just grabbed that net worth edge, but this game is so close right now. Yeah, one thing is their catch is really weak. I mean, they're just watching uh, mid one farm ancients under a ward and they can't really do much about it you know the, mm -hmm. the range of song initiation isn't that fantastic and with the underlord as your offlaner not picking up some four that can get that long range initiation like a clockwork or something they can't really grab anyone um, they definitely have those options on secret if you catch someone uh, a little bit out like that with the shaker or with the disruptor even the phoenix or the, the tiny so this five man dota from newbie it's very effective against the heroes on Secret, and what else is, you know, this is kind of newbie's Dota, so they're pretty happy to play like this. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the Chinese Dota in general, you know? Yeah, the BKB is also now picked up by Gyro, so not too much magic immunity, but both sides have it on their position one cores, so both sides may be a little bit more eager to take a fight right now. It'll be Secret that choose to smoke with Ace, Mid-1, and Puppy. They'll rotate through the mid as Yapsor looks to initiate, but won't quite find it. Yeah, with him being spotted, though, they uh, understand where the smoke was going. Mm -hmm. So probably knowing their top tower is going to be punished, they'll likely just get the trade in the bottom lane. I like this item build from Naga as well. Kaka has the Aghanim Scepter queued up. Still a ways away, but can potentially make that ultimate even more of a game ca uh, game changer if you pop it at the right time. Massive AoE healing for your whole team. Yeah, better in this game than most of newbies games, I would say, simply because they're not running this with the Disruptor. They're not really always going for that big song initiation. Mm -hmm. It's more about the song breakup. And the other factor is that you have this Phoenix Egg that's occurring sometimes during the song, so there's still damage coming into your team. And that's going to be fine. You just uh, you sing it up. Everyone gets healed during the whole uh, Phoenix Egg and should be okay as it comes out. But uh, that is a long ways away, of course. Yep. Now Viper working on the BKB and pretty darn close himself. Actually just picked up the recipe. So that'll be the third bout of Magic Immunity as Kaka gets glimpsed back from the PP up top. It's okay. Now KP can come in. That was just a bait. They actually want KP here. <laughs> just so we can Firestorm it. It's actually true. This is a way better situation. If that was intentional. All credit to them. Well, Puppy trying to TP out. We'll get interrupted by KP's Yule Scepter. Comes back down to the Pit of Malice. Yeah, Don't Secret know. see this play. They know that 
They're they're all rapid. Yeah, they are just gonna leave Puppies. puppy high yeah. and dry. See Smoked ya. up. Kaka is on his way in. There should be a pretty easy ensnare to set up this kill. Static storm, kinetic field deployed. Puppy doing everything he can to buy time and maybe survive, but no, the cavalry's here, and that will be the end of the disruptor. But from the secret hey. perspective, hey, it's just your position five, better than losing more. Chappy. Butterfly up next for Luna. She's got the Eagle Song and farming very quickly. She's going to have it in just another minute, Trent. Well, I can tell you, Ace, uh, he's going to call Jinx because he wants one too. Ah. So they can both be irritated at missing their right clicks. All right, definitely a game where MKB will get a little bit more priority in the item list as a tier two up top gets pushed in by Newbie. Right now, Secret not really moving like they want to mount a defense. Not moving as fast as Newbie either. I mean, from yeah. that whole top, they kind of knew exactly what they were doing. They had that vision inside the dire jungle. You knew where Newbie was going, and Secret just say, hmm, I, I don't think we can do anything about this, guys. They have the song. We don't have Disruptor. Like, we got to give this up. And this is that part of the map you really want the good vision over for the Roche fit. Kaka got to find Yapsor. Stops any chance of a blink there with the Riptide. Ah, beautifully done. It's a good use to initiate the Song of the Siren to interrupt the TP. They really want this kill on Yapsor, and they will find it. Cost them a cooldown, but hey, it's a level 2 Song of the Siren, oh. so a little bit shorter. But they get a little unlucky, because that Roche spawn's going to be back up before the song is. So there's a chance that could have an impact. Yapsor will be here in time, though. Okay. All right. A very tight timing window to hit, but definitely some uh, possibilities there, Trent, no doubt. Got to be a little bit more cautious about uh, spending both the net and the... Uh, the Lucent Beam next time, it seems. So there is the Butterfly on Luna, and Gyrocopters actually isn't that far away either. He's going to clear out another set of Ancients. Uh, still has some farming to do, but just a few more minutes, and Gyro will have some movement speed and evasion for himself. Yeah, mid one has really been leapfrogged, though. You know, you go for that early Silver Edge, and you don't get a lot of kills, and then it's just like, uh-oh, like, what do we do now? I mean, overall, he's got great. I mean, 10, 2, and 1, sure. But in terms of creating that threat across the map with the Silver Edge, he certainly hasn't accelerated the same way as like a lot of farming items would have. But likely part of the plan is they try and elevate Ace and both Fada up to kind of that same level. Very balanced trio here. Yeah, Tiny moving into the Sanj and Yasha next. Not an item you always see on Tiny. I think some players sort of regard S and Y or Shadow Blade is the ultimate choice, but here mid one just going for a little more of a right click base tiny will scale very nicely, but in the interim doesn't really help his burst damage. For now he's just relegated to pushing out some waves and newbie continue there. Always five man. Roche has been spotted. 25 more seconds till the song is up, but with current posturing, no way Seeker getting advantage there. KP goes for the setup onto Gyrocopter, and it'll just push him back. No real follow-up there, but Yule's into Pit of Malice. Definitely a nice combo to start off a fight. Uh, Puppy with that four staff also uh, keeping Ace nice and safe. Roshan, maybe the idea for newbie here. They're just going to head right into the pit. Secret obviously have the option to contest, oh, but they're right on top of too. a ward right yeah. now. Even if they smoke and start making the movement, Newbie will know exactly when they're coming and how fast. Yeah, they're not quite fast enough here, so it's a little bit awkward for KP and Kaka, hmm. but there we go. They don't get there in time. All right, Moogie the one to grab the Aegis, and Cheese now secured by the Viper, as of course that was Roche number two. At the 30 minute mark, 17 to 14, still a very small lead for Newbie. Feels like they're in the driver's seat of this game, but Secret are hanging in there and still oh, farming I mean, very nice. It's one fight. It's really nothing, mm -hmm. honestly. Like, when you look at these heroes, Shaker, Phoenix, even just Tiny Disruptor, you know, there's tons of damage, tons of control that you can put on a big AoE. So, one little flub by Newbie, and it's, they can easily be down like 4 or 5k. Yeah, but it could also go the other way. This yep, Luna's certainly. already big here, Trent. If they take a team fight, this could even be Barracks. They're going to go high ground now. Mid one on the front lines. He's the one to get initiated on. He's taking huge damage in the backup line from Secret. Can't get there. It's mid one down. He does not have a buyback. BKB now used by Moogie as he just lays into the tower, forces out the glyph. Newbie okay. have to be happy with that. He's popped his BKB before the Aegis, though. Very aggressive stance, but maybe a chance for him to capitalize. But with no Static Storm and be difficult, pressure really on Yapsor and Fada on this one. And Moogie now sieging from the low ground, trying to play this safe, knowing there's no magic immunity. They can't even win Fata them down. Doing pretty good damage, but Glimmer Cape is there. And if Moogie throws away the Aegis for this tier 3 tower, that'll open up shrines. And I think Nubi will still regard that as a win. Another 25 seconds until this tiny comes back up. The tier 3 falls, and Nubi want more. They say, these are barracks open. We've got 20 seconds. Let's do this, boys. Not one Glimmer Cape, but two Glimmer Capes. How can you kill this Luna? 
Yeah, the aura on the Luna making this siege so much easier. They will commit for the barracks. Moogie still with the Aegis in oh, tow. No! The Yaxor, blink got he biffs the stun. Oh, the illusion. No. They're going to lose the Aegis, but they will get Yapsor in exchange. Newbie are in such a great spot all of a sudden. Oh my, Trent. Oh, we're going to have to see who canceled that, but all the credit. Small oh. glimpse Ooh. onto Moogie. Not going to do a hell of a lot. They can't get too, you know, don't go too crazy right now. Yeah, you have lost the ages. This is Newbie's wheelhouse though, Trent. Uh, they are so good at these kind of fake back scenarios. Secret are so nervous to leave their base right now. And Newbie know this. With a 4v5, they're assuming there's no buyback back on this Earthshaker. And even if he was, there's no echo. The Glimmer Capes coming in handy so much here. Yeah, uh, but the wave, uh, it's still in the mid lane. If they can just clear with that mid, there's still no creeps top. Oh, Secret Glimps pull back. one back, but Bada still has pipe. Or sorry, KP still has his pipe to like activate here, so not so much of an issue. Yep. All right. So with that, newbie do finally retreat, perhaps grabbing the shrine on the way. Yeah, they sure will. And now we see a pretty sizable lead, definitely the biggest lead we've seen this game. So here we go. Here's the replay. What was it that stopped that blink dagger from Yapsor? Great question. Uh, it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> so, earlier part of the fight, it's kind of a slow siege from Newbie. They do it quite well. Oh, oh it's just the that glaive. one glaive. That one glaive. <laughs> oh, my. That's oh, the so heartbreaking. Oh, that is brutal. That would have been such a setup that they uh, probably I could mean, have followed up with. That was calculated by Moogie. Let's be, first off, yes. let's be honest here. Obviously, he knew that, that uh, Shaker would become visible that exact moment. So. Well, some big items picked up following that fight. Moogie now with a full Satanic, so much more sustainability there. And on the other side, there is an MKB on the Gyrocopter. So now Ace doing a lot more damage. It will open up some oh, possibilities. Yeah, Hello, Moogie. And Moogie going to pop the BKB before the stun connects, and maybe they can turn this the other way. There is an Eclipse available, but will he use it here? Yapsor. Showing off that shadow amulet, S triple C oh, on the high, the high ground. ground. Actually goes in onto the tiny ace, forced to pop his BKB as he presses forward. But on the backside, this tiny's been isolated, and newbie are going to bring him down. The golem with the additional stun to make it all the easier. Zapsor will TP out as he makes it to the tree line, and the rest of Secret do complete the exodus. Man, KP's uh, Yule Scepter has come in handy so many times. Just there again, cancel the TP, make sure there's nope. no free getaway there. It's the setup. So now Newbie grouped up as five in the bottom lane. They're going to take out this last outer tower. It is this tier two, already pretty low on HP. And we might see another high ground siege, possibly thinking if Tiny's got the buyback, let's force it. If he doesn't, we're going high ground. They haven't found that big play. No giant egg, no big Shivas I'll cross five heroes. I mean, there's a veil here too with the Earthshaker. There's still that chance they wipe them all, but you've lost so much already at this point. They it's need so several hard, fights to get back into this one. Crimson Guard delivered as well. The reason why we see this Underlord up against the Gyro all oh. so much. And the Naga Siren, Aghanim Scepter. Look at the positioning from Kaka, staying so far back. And Secret know this, KP, the target of choice. Kaka does not want to use the ultimate for this. They're going to Glimmer Cape him. He'll heal back up, and KP is actually going to be just fine. Okay, that means there's no disengage in that sense. So they're just going to get out. Oh, don't leave Moogie. Uh-oh. Okay, that was close. The Glimpse, not going to bring him back. Wow, I, yeah, I definitely thought Moogie's about to get grabbed. Yeah. All right, easy. So 17 to 17. Oh, he popped his BKB back. Oh, yeah, that would explain it. That, the that, magic that, immunity. <laughs> quite good Good against item I hear. <laughs> so anyhow, Newbie's still relatively happy with that, though. Uh, they're at this point where they've got the lead, and all they need to do is hang on to it. Control the map, continue farming effectively, and I think maybe Newbie just looking to wait for the next Roche. It is going to be Roche 3, yep. so that means Refresher Shard is coming. This is the time when you just want to reset. Be patient and not throw this lead away. Yeah. And uh, you look at that net worth chart, though, and it's awfully green. Uh, in terms of, uh, sorry, my mistake, the, uh, the net worth, uh, the, the other chart with the, uh, the five heroes. That one, very yeah. green. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of secret heroes up there. Absolutely. It's I mean, Moogie, but then it's a lot of secret heroes. Yeah, the Gyrocopter is still farming very well, and the Phoenix is farming impressively well. I mean, Fada has now overtaken the Tiny. I guess mid one has been the victim of a, a couple of these gank attempts, but he's even picked up Akaya now to try to do a little bit of extra damage when those big team fights do break out. Aghanim Scepter going to be coming up next on the Phoenix. A huge reset tool if he can grab it. Newbie looking to close this one out here. He's playing a bit aggressive, but Faith willing to go a little bit further than SCCC. 
probably not going to find much with this smoke rotation. How far off of Roche are we, Trent? Uh, pretty far. So we'll yeah. see what the timer looks like in about a minute and a half. So still plenty of time to sit back, farm, find that next round of core items. Puppy does have an Aghanim Scepter queued up on the Disruptor. A game-changing item, but oh so far away. Uh, I love the auras on Newbie. They look like they're doing one of those quests from the Battle Pass right now. I mean, <laughs> we're going for the 37-minute drums on Faith after just getting his Solar Crest as well. So they're ready to buff somebody up when they go for the uh, yeah. last two racks. They've got the Shivas coming out on KP. The only thing they're lacking uh, is basically a Vlad's offering. Yeah, perfect. Be in there. Down bottom, Yapsor, maybe scattered out. He's just going to blink into the tree line and TP, but Song of the Siren. Will they be able to find him? Kaka moves into the tree lines, and it looks like this will be another freebie on the Earthshaker. He does what he can. Ace is also going to get picked uh, off by Moogie, what? making the retreat, and it's two down for Secret, just like that. What happened? <laughs> I mean, Moogie's just slammed down there. Takes out Ace. BKB wow. was used. Did not fight him. That Satanic is just... Whew. Well, and, Trent, uh, this went from, okay, it's not that bad for Secret to Newbie are looking to try to head up to the high ground if they can. They won't have a creep wave, so this timing window rather tight. There is also a buyback available on the Gyrocopter, so probably won't be able to capitalize too much off that set of kills, but does push them just a little bit further in the lead in terms of economy. BKB on the way for Tiny and Luna. What was that queued up? Was that a nullifier? Currently just the Relic, but uh, I don't know, maybe he'll do the same thing. Maybe he's inspired from last game. Just yeah. get a rapier. Quite possibly. That Aegis is, uh, becomes theirs. You never know. But yeah. uh, of course, uh, I, I do agree. I think Nullifier would be a fine replacement for the uh, Dragonlance. Well, we'll see. Moogie with a lot of gold stockpiled. He will have pick of the litter. So Gyrocopter down for 10. Definitely does not want to buy back here. They will be forced to glyph earlier than planned. KP gets broken. Big burst damage coming his way. Static Storm, Kinetic Field. But Yule Scepter goes off. And now Song of the Siren. Just watch the heal. There's that Agonims from Kaka and KP right back to full HP. Moogie jumps in. BKB, a clutch puppy falls. Mid one in trouble next. He's down as well. No buybacks on either. And Secret could be in big trouble in game one, Trent. Now the counter initiation. The egg comes in. Big damage onto Luna. But hey, they've got the uh, taxi service. KP trying to take oh, him home and it'll again. go. Oh, yeah, so I just cannot find a dunk this game. Oh, my. Heartbreaking for Secret. So, bottom lane of Barracks does stay standing. The tier three falls. I mean, credit, uh, they held with just three heroes. That's true. It's impressive in itself, but they're going to come back a lot stronger. And yeah, Moogie, he is indeed inspired. He really wants that Aegis, and he wants a rapier right after. Oh, it's not a bad strategy. Looking, at, Oh, let's take a look at the replay here. So, again, what stopped Yapsor this time, Trent? I love how the they, the they go for the break, and then all this damage, and then Kaka's like, hey, this Agnes is probably pretty good. I mean, this is before he even has the 20 HP regen mm -hmm. on, on KP. In fact, he didn't even go for it. He went for the attack speed. They're balling out of control so hard right now, but... Yeah. And it's just a great counter initiation from Moogie as he jumps in. Not much mid one can do as even the Death Ward flies. Keep our eye on Yapsor in the back line here. Okay, never mind. It's a mystery. Barracks we'll never are know. going down. Newbie have come back into the base. Tiny just about to respawn, but this will be the bottom lane of Barracks. So they did hold during that last fight, Trent, but kind of all for nothing in the end. Yeah, just come right back. I mean, especially once the dunk gets missed, right? Because mm -hmm. then it's just like, all right, they don't have dunk. We can just run on back, and he's still not going to have it. That'll be another 50 seconds before that is even the case. Well, oh, Moogie, he's lurking. He's heading the over other there. Side. Is it's, it time? It's <gasps> also Roche. Oh, it's time, baby. We got the rapier. It's a rapier. In we go. It feels so safe. You know, normally it's that item. We're so far behind. It's our Hail Mary to get back into this game. But Nubi are doing it the other way. We're so far ahead. We can secure Roche. We are ready to close this one out. Roche falling very quickly. Of course, the Aegis gets picked up by Moogie. He wants to catch somebody outside of the base. He's going to be correct here, but they find him first. Oh, no, he just gets a little too aggressive. Static Storm comes, so no song to reset. And Nubi might need to be a little more patient now. 70 seconds till that Naga Siren oh, respawns. Terrifying. That could have been the end of the game right there, but they're actually sneaking here oh, as well. They're going Spencer. in for more. Oh, the Pit of Malice on two. They go into the egg, but Moogie pops the BKB. He's going to try to finish off the Phoenix, and they will. Gyrocopter and the Yapsor both go down. Buybacks coming from only Fada. Gyro does have it for now, but it looks like Nubi are going for the death push. 
They won't have Yaps or he has the ultimate, but no buyback in the grave for 45 seconds. Nubi just want to end this. The Rapier Luna destroys the tier four so quickly as now the throne is exposed. This could be the final fight. Can Secret make this hold? They kill Faith first, but an instant buyback as Mugi just stays focused on the throne. Remember, if they kill him once, he's coming back to life. Ace goes down again. It's a dieback for him. KP channels <laughs> ultimate, but it's Nubi's game all day. It's GG, and they go up 1-0 with Secret now one game away from elimination. It really looks like Newbie came into this one with the